Mm -hmm. That's so, I just want to interject, that's so important. When mm -hmm. I've ever interviewed anybody, I've always asked, have you been on our website? And what did you gain from that? Mm -hmm. Because if, it, if the answer is no and then nothing, or yes but nothing, not good. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> didn't speak to me. Yeah. So, um, from, from my perspective, I think that the most difficult questions or the most difficult interview I've ever been in from an interviewer side has been, like you said, those interviews where you say, oh, do you have any questions for me? No, I'm good. So in our 30-minute conversation, you've learned everything you need to know about what it would take for you to move mm -hmm. here, and that's not great to be on that perspective. On the other side of it, um, I've also been the interviewee who's been asked kind of the, are you sure you really want to come work here? And have that sort of awkward feeling that it's like, well, what's wrong with your organization that I wouldn't? <laughs> so, um, but the, but the uh, motivation there is just to see if the candidate has done their homework. Right. Mm -hmm. And as you right. stated, it's so important not to just show up without having done any background or investigation on that company or that business and what questions would be good to ask just to test uh, you know, that question of what is your ideal workplace. I, I don't know if you've ever asked that one, but <laughs> yeah. that's another good question that students should be uh, ready mm -hmm. to answer is what they consider their ideal workplace. So, Absolutely. Sue, how about yourself? You know, I um, was once, at, panel in interviews are exciting. <laughs> Um, I recall years ago having one, and I almost think kind of felt like I had an out-of-body experience because I knew I was answering the questions, but there were so many new faces in front of me that um, I did get that job, though, so that's good. Um, was asked one time how to, um, the question was, you're in a room and you have, um, you have no access to, you have access to a telephone, but you don't have a computer or internet or phone book or anything like that. Um, how would you determine how many gas stations are in the state of Oregon? Okay, and so it's a, I, I think he said it was an, it's either an Apple or an IBM, isn't that funny, Apple or IBM question. And they really just wanted to see how you, how you process information and how you pull from the resources that you, that you have. So, um, I mean, I came up with an answer and a rationale, and they're really just looking for the rationale, but um, completely different than the direction the individual would have gone because he would, had a little more analytical mind than I did and I was going to go on. I know this person can help me get to this point and then that person can help me get to this point and eventually we'll, we'll figure it out. So, but that was, that was a really unusual one. Great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Judy, anything from your Well, memory? you know, I've been doing the same job for a long time, so mm -hmm. interviewing is something that, you know, I help kids learn how to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as far as, uh, you know, we come up with, with questions that we think that they might, they may ask. Uh, once in a while, I, I keep looking around to see what questions are out there because I know that they're asking many new things mm -hmm. now. They want to know different things than they did before. They don't always want to just ask you, tell me about you, you know. <laughs> they actually do give you scenarios like uh, that. And that's what we, ma mainly I think that that was always the questions that I always worried about, you know, whenever I would interview because they would always give you a scenario, you know, now what would you do in this case or how would you solve this problem? And I think those are, the, those are hard ones, but they really do uh, enable you to, to think and to be able to figure out how you would solve that problem. So I think that would be the only thing that I might be able to think about. That would Great. Well, just yeah. in, in yeah. review, Career Connections is coming up in March. March 11th. It'll be from 8 to noon. It's at the Conference Center. Okay. And the number of students, you said, are going to total about 600 mm -hmm. in number. And mm -hmm. these, in, in what year of high school are they? Predominantly juniors and seniors. Seniors, juniors and seniors. So, um, and as Judy mentioned, they're, they're, they'll be gearing up and preparing to, to be successful at that event. So um, a lot of the students will come from career and technical. Um, classes, but not, not totally, yeah. um, but that'll be one focus. So if there are parents watching this show and they have a junior or a senior in one of the high schools and mm -hmm. they say, I want to make sure my kid gets to that, how, how would that happen? I would say that they would need just, just to have their student come and talk, to, talk with me or talk to the career specialist at each of their schools mm -hmm. uh, to be able to make that happen. Uh, we'll be, you know, going to the classrooms to figure out. Some of the teachers will be bringing their full classrooms, but every year uh, I individually bring uh, many students that we've, I've helped them to prepare their resumes and those kinds of things. So I would say that if, the, if uh, parents are listening and they want to be able to connect their student to this, that they would see the career specialist at each of the high schools, mm -hmm. at any of the high schools. 
And if there's an or call a, the chamber or call right, and yeah. then we'll put them in touch. Certainly, they okay. can call the chamber, uh, and they can look on our uh, Work and Learn Now website to get contact information mm -hmm. for the all the career specialists. Um, and if businesses or organizations are interested in either helping with mock interviews or the career and training portion of, of Career Connections, um, they can call either Kathy or I at the chamber, and um, and we'll get them set up so that they can participate in the event. So we have that number on the screen, and you want to share the uh, website again? Website is www.workandlearnnow.com. And actually, there's a lot of great resources on the website for interview preparation. Mm -hmm. So lots of tools on there. And Jill, um, your thoughts on the importance of first impressions. So these students are walking in, and, and it's not a place where, as was stated, that it's an expectation that they're going to interview for a real job. Mm -hmm. This is practice. But at the same time, their image, their first impression of them is still being out there, and it reflects on them, their school. What's your advice with regard to the importance of first impressions and how serious students should take this? Uh, well, I'm a marketing person, so I am really focused on that kind of personal brand idea and the, the thought that whatever you do, you need to keep in mind that that's who you're showing yourself as being. So if your hairstyle, your clothes, the way you talk, the way you greet somebody, it's all part of your personal brand. And even if it's not officially an interview, it's still going to be what somebody retains about you, whether it's when you go in to pick up your application for the job or it's when you see somebody out and about in the community at a different time, that it's very important mm -hmm. to not just make a positive first impression, but to continue making that positive impression thereafter. And the greeting? Do you, do you go over the, the appropriate Actually, our students, meeting? our students are given an actual handbook, uh, and we have a teacher's handbook and a student handbook. And so they have samples of resumes, they have samples of uh, do's and don'ts, and uh, all of those, and we actually talk about those in class before they go, because as we say, your first impression, no matter whether this is a real interview or not, you're here to learn, and you're here to make an impression on that employer. So uh, that's, uh, that's key, and we will do the very best that we can to have them this prepared. We tell them they must dress appropriately. Uh, and there's been times when kids have shown up, you know, to ready to leave and they don't get on the bus because they aren't ready. So uh, we will have them as prepared as we possibly can to be that, able to do that. That's great. Uh, final thoughts, Sue? We're, we're really excited about Career Connections, about MAPS being the presenting sponsor. Um, they're a great pa partner in so mm -hmm. many ways. Um, the kids are excited. Um, the more we are doing the mock interviews and engaging the students in our in our guest speakers, the career exploration, um, talking about goal setting and, and setting yourself up for success, you can just see you can see the lights go on. You know the light bulb go on for the students when they're hearing from folks from the outside in the community talk about what's out there and what the possibilities are. And it's it's really exciting um, to see to see those light bulbs go on. One example is um, had an author come to. Um, one of the high schools um, and speak to a class about uh, she writes business books they're boring it's about workers comp but she talked about how she develops her story and how she sets mm -hmm. goals for herself and um, she was so engaging and, and when it was over she said if anybody wants to connect with me um, I'll give you my email address well sh several students came up and shared addresses and a few months later she um, gave me a call to say that one of the students had sent her um, a story that she had written and just said, will you just proofread it and tell me what you think? Well, the author, um, Lynn, went a step better than that. She proofread it, but she also sent it to her publisher and said, will you just take a look at this, send a letter back to the student and give some feedback? Well, you know, what a fabulous thing that is and what a great impact that on that student. Say, go for it, you know. Here's, you're, you're good at it. Here's some direction you can go and learn more and keep trying. And, you know, just what a great opportunity. And, and that's what Ready to Learn, Ready can, to Work helps bring into the classroom. What a fabulous story and a great way just to end a, a great yeah. time of yeah. uh, sharing uh, about a, a great event coming up on March 11th and, and a great partnership that's ongoing every day in the life of schools. Judy, thank you yeah. for the work that you do. Okay. And Jill, we're just uh, excited to have uh, MAPS as our presenting sponsor of Career Connections and for all the work that you and your team does in uh, this community. Thank you very much. Thank and. You. Sue, thank you for uh, your great work and for Bye. being here and, and sharing the stories. And as always, we appreciate you joining us on uh, this show, and uh, together we'll keep Salem on the move. Thank you.